right, welcome back to Mastering MMA. I'm Coach Lee here with you today. Um, I got Connor with us again. We just finished up a private. That's why we're uh, huffing and puffing. So if we're a little after breath, sorry about that. We just finished a couple live rounds. Um, today I'm going to talk about a ham stretcher. Um, so I originally saw this when, um, oh, what's the the Russian fighter um, trained with, with Habib? Uh, Zabit, Zabit or something. I originally saw this. It was actually he did it on, on a fight, but one of his teammates did it before. So obviously it's a big thing from there. Um, and they are doing it from um, being on somebody's back and then standing up and trying to shake them off. They're hooking the leg and hitting it. Um, so I'll kind of show you how this played out. And everybody was like the commentators all were saying this is a knee bar. And I guess eventually it would turn into a knee bar, but it's more of a hamstring stretcher. So he's going straight up, right? here and the, they were trying to shake them off so their feet were real close to their hands um, so yeah their, their feet would come up and they were just dropping it in here and then stretching this ham out and there's my calf so basically what's happening here is i am having this leg stretched out over my leg um so if you can how flexible are you can i get get a hold of your yeah your ankle here so basically they're here and they're stretching this hamstring out. Um, it's kind of hard to get in this position without forcing there and being able to get a good angle. But I'm stretching his leg over this. So that's where I originally saw this. And I was very curious because the commentators were all talking about a knee bar and it didn't seem like it was going to attack the knee to me. Right? It looked more like a, uh, a, a stretching your muscles type of submission. And I guess if you were flexible enough, eventually it would become a knee bar. Um, but it would still be kind of hard to finish because your, your fulcrum's way down here, right? So it still seems like it'd be more of a slicer than a knee bar. But um, that being said, I, I guess eventually at some point it would turn into a knee bar. But after watching, I was like, man, there's no way that that's attacking his knee. So uh, went into the gym, played with it a little bit, figured out it's a hand slicer. I liked it, but I don't get too many people stand up on me. Um, I'm real good with pressure from, from back control of just flattening people out and ground and pound and then eventually sinking in a choke. Um, I've been doing that for a long, long time. Like, like they give up their back. It's, it's very few people that don't get flattened out. So uh, I, I liked it a lot, but I wasn't able to get to it from there. So I started playing with it more. I found uh, two different entries I like this, this a whole lot with. So I'm going to take his back. The first one is we're kind of playing here, and I'm trying to get this choke in, and he's trying to avoid me getting this hook in. So he brings his leg real high. So what I'll do here is I'll get as far up as his thigh as I can and try to keep your, your knee as close to your chest as you can. Right, so this happens. Right, so they're, they're trying to keep me from going here. So I'll clamp here, I'll cross my feet, I'll reach over, and then I'll start stretching this out. Ooh, oh, you good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll start stretching that out. So basically, what's happening is I've got my one hook in, I've got them dropped over, I'm usually attacking the choke while all this is happening, and they're going to bring their knee up real close, so I can't get that other hook in, right? Um, so I have less control, which is, you know, what most people have been taught since, you know, what, week two or three, when whenever you started talking about defending from the back, is to try to not let them get both hooks in. So I'm going to lock over here, which slows down their ability to get this leg back away from me, and then I clamp and just start working up, I stretch it out. Um, works really well. Uh, I hit this. Uh, I hit this a good bit. Whenever people are really trying hard to defend against me, getting my second hook in, um, a lot of the guys I train with now will just kind of like fight it with their hand and let it go in because <laughs> uh, it's it's definitely not a comfortable submission at all, um, especially if you're not flexible. So the other place I like to hit this is go to your back, um, head towards this all over there. So and scoop my push here out of frame. The other place I like to hit this from a whole lot is um, this, some places call it perfect mount, some call it uh, uh, modified S guard, there's a lot of different names for this, but this is one of my favorite, and I'm usually gift wrapped here, um, I get to this spot a lot from gift wrap, but anyways, I'll get up here and, and I'll start fighting it, and I'll punch thighs, right, and if I'm just grappling, you know, sometimes it's come up or I can force it up different ways, there's different ways to manipulate your opponent here. But either way, this knee comes up kind of close. All I'll do from here is I underhook this, I pick the head up, 
and I step my back leg over their shoulder and then I cross my feet. Right, so he's kind of stuck in here, his head's stuck, he can't really arch out. I climb the leg, I stretch it out. So let's turn the complete opposite way, your head towards the door. So from the back side, it's going to look like this. I'm here, I'm here. I might be punching the thigh and get to me. It comes up, I wrap around it, I pick the head up, I kick my leg over, and I cross. Like right here, pull your head out. Right, he's pretty stuck. I climb the ankle and I stretch it out. Um, it's a uh, pretty brutal um, pain-wise because it's, it's definitely uh, pushing most people far beyond their flexibility. If you're with your training partners, be super careful for careful with this, right? You don't want to yank that hamstring and then they can't walk for two weeks. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's risk of major injury there, but you're more risk of uh, your legs hurting for quite a while and not being able to train. So, you know, don't break all your toys. You don't have anything to play with. <laughs> Figure out how to do it. Don't yank on it, please. Um, but that's my two favorite setups into that. I got a couple others that, that aren't nearly as, as perfected yet, but those two definitely work really well. Um, I hit them a lot and um, people are still really surprised about it from time to time. <laughs> but uh, anyways, if, if you like this move, hit that like button for me. Um, comment in the bottom, tell me what you think about it. Tell me if you tried it. Tell me if you've got other entries into it, right? Let's share it with the community. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, hit that, hit the notification bell. You don't want to miss any of these videos. You got anything to add to this? Uh, it hurts. <laughs> Beautiful. That's what we want, right? We want to be able to destroy stuff if, if need be, right? We want to be able to break arms if need be. We want to be able to rip hamstrings if need be. So uh, that's what we want. If we want it to be able to hurt and still, I could have still pulled that leg way far on either one of those. Um, so that's that's definitely a, a, a positive there, right? If you're struggling to get a tap on something, something's not right, go back and play with it. Um, like I say, I, I was barely pulling on it. He was uh, quick to tap, so... Um, be careful with your training partners. Play with this. Figure it out. It's great. Um, and I guess that'll be it for this video. We'll catch you next time on Mastering MMA.